Yeah, so I'm actually going to use uh, the example of uh, road infrastructure surveying from uh, UAS LiDAR. Um, I'm from Teledyne Geospatial. Um, most people haven't heard of that name. Uh, formerly, we refer to as Teledyne Optech. Optech's been manufacturing LiDAR systems for uh, over 40 years. We've manufactured uh, airborne systems, mobile scanning systems, uh, terrestrial LiDAR systems, and now uh, UAS systems. Uh, so road infrastructure projects, they they vary uh, quite significantly in, in the uh, range of requirements based on, on really the nature of the work required. Uh, so starting off in a greenfield application, um, you can basically, it's primarily looking at topographic surveys, which are relatively low accuracy since you're looking at just generating a contour plots and a, 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 an overview map of the area. Uh, once you actually go into a construction phase, this is where the accuracy requirements tend to, to increase quite significantly. So as those projects start, you get into earthworks and uh, aggregate work. Uh, moving forward, you get into some paving work. And at the end, of, towards the end of the project, you're, you're doing quality control. And often for quite large projects, take for example, if you're doing a, a highway that's tens of kilometers long, these uh, these different stages of the construction project will overlap. And as a result, if you look at the deliverables required, they're going to overlap quite significantly as well. Thank you. So for example, uh, when you're starting with the earthworks, that's going to be primarily a lower accuracy topographic survey. And as you get towards the end, when you're doing a comparison to the as-built plan, uh, you really need engineering grade data, which in the past has been traditionally collected through uh, manual survey methods, terrestrial laser scanning, or mobile mapping methods. And then finally, once you've actually got a, a completed road and you're doing a uh, basically maintenance on that road, those deliverables can, again, be such things as the as-built drawing and the engineering grade, um, and then as well as mapping other assets uh, close to the road. So for example, electric utilities uh, and vegetation inventory. The other thing that is becoming more important is basically the change monitoring. What's happening to the road and the area around it? Because uh, as you have, uh, for example, over different seasons and frost freeze cycles and the, the heaving as a result, that road's going to change over time. So one of the methods I, or one of the things I like to, to use as a reference, because it's really one of the worst case scenarios that has the highest uh, accuracy requirement, is looking at the curb uh, required or modeling the curb. So here's an example from mobile mapping data that, that gives you an idea of the type of accuracy that uh, uh, customers expect or are looking for from the data. And so from this, you can see, you can pick out the edge of the pavement, you can pick up the gutter, uh, the face of the curb, as well as the, the back of the curb surface, and then to the left of that is the grass. Typically from UAS LiDAR though, this is much harder to pick up. So this is an, an example from a typical UAS LiDAR that most people are familiar with. And you can see, like as humans, there's a curb there, but you really can't pick out uh, the exact features. So for example, that face of the curb, if you look at the, the width of those points there, that's roughly 20 centimeters. So it's really hard to pick up the, those accurate as-built uh, information uh, from that. And so what are the reasons for that? Well, it's a combination of uh, beam divergence, uh, the, the ranging precision of the, the systems and the accuracy of the systems. So I'm actually going to, to go into one aspect of it um, that a uh, uh, previous presenter talked about. But you can see that from this, you really can't pick out the, those features that were looked at before, such as the edge of pavement, gutter, face of curb, or back of curb. So how do we re resolve those details? So I'm going to focus on looking at, at the beam divergence which most people are familiar of with beam divergence as the ability for a beam to basically find those holes in vegetation and put as much laser energy into that hole so you can get a return from the, the wet forest floor. But with respect to accuracy, beam divergence is sort of analogous to GSD for people who are familiar with uh, photogrammetry methods. And it's a way to, to measure what is the resolution of that LiDAR point on the ground. Because often people think, okay, I've got great density, but density doesn't necessarily uh, equate to, to resolution when you're looking for those fine features. So basically, as a, a laser goes farther, its beam st uh, starts to get bigger. And this is beam divergence. So there's an example of a small beam divergence and a larger beam divergence. So at the end, at, at longer range, smaller beam divergence means smaller spot, larger beam divergence, larger spot. And so when you look at the beam divergence for various different systems, uh, on the far left, you've got a very small spot. So that's um, one of our systems at 0.3 millirads. And moving to the right is an example of, of beam divergence of several different systems on the market. 
The other thing is the beam divergence can really change based on, um, or some types of our hardware have beams that are not symmetric around the axis. And that means that when you're planning your flight, if you've got one of these systems that has basically that the beam diverges on a different axis, how you plan your flight is all of a sudden going to become important. And sometimes you really don't have control over that, for example, when you're, you're trying to fly beside a roadway and still scan onto the roadway. So let's look at an example of a large beam divergence and how that really affects um, uh, basically trying to, to sample a curve. So when that large point hits the ground, it's first going to hit uh, a spot away from the curve. And that's the spot that's actually going to start the response uh, of the, the LiDAR time of flight. And so, but the thing is, when you georeference the data, it's going to be georeferenced in the center of that spot. So that's where the spot's going to basically uh, be recorded. Similarly, when you hit towards the top of the curve, it's going to hit there first and the spot registered there. And then lastly, the best case scenario is where you basically hit in the middle. And so for some people who have looked at, at similar data or you've, you saw it in a previous slide, this, this, this explains why that, that width of the curve is, is so wide in that data. Now when you take a, a smaller spot, you can see how now where it hits is where the point's going to get recorded. So when you then take a look at what you can get with basically a uh, LiDAR scanner that's capable of collecting um, basically engineering grade data, uh, this is an example of that. So uh, you can pick up the, the edge of the pavement here. This is actually picked up using the intensity uh, of the, the, the LiDAR, uh, not the actual uh, range measurement here. But you can clearly pick out the gutter, uh, where the face of the curb is, and the back of the curb, and the grass to the left of it. So then that another example uh, to look at is the, the wide, uh, or the road profiles. So here's an example from uh, mobile mapping. And so um, when you're looking at uh, the wider road profile for a road, uh, there's the road slope so that water can drain uh, to the gutters. There's picking up the curbs and gutters on their own, picking up vegetation for that vegetation inventory. And on the side here, unfortunately, there was a fence there. And that really blocked uh, looking at the, the side uh, of the road. This could be a fence. This could be a, a barrier. But if you look at uh, what you would get from a, a UAS system, this is actually quite different. So you're still being able to pick up uh, those features that are important, for example, the slope of the road, uh, the median, the curbs and gutters that we were looking at before, um, the barriers that would have prevented a, a mobile mapping system from, from collecting this data. But in this case, we're able to get the embankment on the side too. So uh, take, for example, if you're in an area that was recently flooded or if you're just monitoring that embankment which can erode or change over time, you're not able to pick that up with a mobile mapping system, but with a UAS system uh, we can and simultaneously collect all the, the higher accuracy data from the road itself. So when you look at really what are the benefits that you get from uh, uh, basically doing uh, road infrastructure surveys from an engineering grade system, um, there's really two that I like to focus on. Uh, the first is that we can capture both the topographic data and the engineering grade data uh, in a single survey. So you're basically improving efficiency, uh, less time in the area, uh, less chance of uh, error or having to manipulate different uh, data sets together to, to get to the end deliverables. And lastly, you can basically capture um, that large area uh, including the full corridor width. So for some projects that can be uh, a couple hundred meters on e either side of the data, and you're able to collect that in an engineering sur uh, survey. So again, significant uh, uh, productivity improvements uh, in, a single, uh, in a single project. So that's the uh, end of my uh, presentation here. Um, if you've got any more questions, I'll be around afterwards, or I'm in Hall 27 where we've got uh, both our UAS LiDAR solution and our other uh, LiDAR solutions. Thank you.